Ok, hello everyone and welcome back to your YouTube channel. And today I have another interesting and amazing video for you. Today I will show you how to plot some variables involved inside a DSL model uh, during a RMS simulation. What I, what I want to tell you is that basically every single variable in every single model that you have in your power system, all of them, they are accessible and you can plot those values when you are running uh, RMS simulations or even EMT simulation. My job today is try to show you in a very simple way and a very fast way how to do so, okay? Let's start the following. Here in front of you, uh, you can see the PM Anderson 9 bus system, the traditional one, yes, I use this system a lot because it's, it's quite famous and there are many in information and confirmation about the behavior, dynamic behavior of this system, okay? In this system, the first step that I would like to do is I will run a load flow, okay? As many people ask me, and many people ask me about this system from previous videos, this is a modified version of the PM Anderson. To be honest, this is a personalized, a very customized version of the PM Anderson that we create because we have been working with this system for years, okay? In this case, uh, here you can see the lot flow. Uh, the lot flow is not matching the original PM Anderson because we here make some changes, okay? However, what is relevant and important for you here right now is that in this case, we are using synchronous machine, okay? We have three synchronous machine in this system. Um, the data is taken from the um, classical PM Anderson book. And of course you have here all the data, okay? In this case, we are using the standard model that is coming inside the Xilin Power Factory for dynamic simulations, okay? But this machine, in particular, this machine, generator G1, uh, we, we include controllers, we include controllers for this machine. And if you look here, the plant model, it's very simple to see the plant model or the composite model, if you want, the element composite, as you can see over here, the plant model include the synchronous machine inside the synchronous slot. Here we have the AVR slot, and in this case we are using a IEEE Type 1 um, um, exciter and an AVR. And finally here you can see we have a governor, and in this case again we are using a standardized model coming from the IEEE, the IEEE G3, okay? That is basically the models. What I would like to do is uh, show you that very simple way to show the very specific diagram of those controllers, okay? If you double click here, if you double click over here, we are opening the element DSL, and here you can see the parameters, the parameters involved in this controller, okay? As you can see over here, this is a user-defined model, the AVR IEEE Type 1, and I can show you the graphic in a very simple way, okay? If you are using the most recent versions of the Xilin Power Factory, you have this button here at the very end, and when you press show the graph, Power Factory are, is showing you is showing you the graphical representation of this uh, of this model, okay? Let me do the same for the um, governor, okay? In this case, double click here at the governor and you can see this is the element, the DSL element of this um, controller. And you can see the list and the values here of the different parameters include. In this uh, uh, ELM DSL, you can see again the same button here and I will show the graphic, okay? Now let me close here and let me close here. As you can see, I have two more tabs here. One tab is showing you, one tab here is showing you the model, the model that is the DSL model, the DSL model that we are using for the AVR. 
In this case, this is a standardized model, IEEE Type 1, coming from the 1968 standard, and this is the Type 1 excitation. And over here, you can see we have the governor, and again, this governor is coming from the standardized model. This is the standardized model for the governor, and here you can see this is the, basically, this is the speed governor, IEEE G3, okay? What I will do is something very simple. What I will do is something very, very simple. The first thing that you must understand is that when you run a, a power system dynamic simulation, you are solving, numerically solving the dynamic equations of the system and power factory, if you tell them to store the numerical results in a variable, power factory later can use that variable, that time series to show you the plot, okay? Here in this PM Anderson system, I would like to show you the dynamic behavior first, and then I will show you how to get one very specific variable from the DSL model, okay? Here I am running the initial conditions. We are using RMS values. We are considering just the positive sequence uh, model. That means this is a balanced condition. We execute the initial conditions. We have here all the parameters. You can see here the voltage applied to the, the field winding. You can see here the PT, I mean the, the, the power that is coming from the turbine and so on, okay? Then I will run the simulation and this simulation is very simple. Here we are running few seconds. We are running 20 seconds and the disturbance is the sudden disconnection at T equals zero of the generator number one. The first thing that I would like to show you is the results, okay? Here, I am showing you the results uh, on the plot at the top. You can see the frequency, the electrical frequency of the three boost bars, okay? You can see the boost bar number one, boost bar number two, boost bar number three. Probably some of you will ask in the comment below why we have frequency on boost bar number one, okay? Because I am not plotting the frequency of the generator. I am plotting the frequency coming from this boost bar number one. And when you disconnect the generator number one, you are still having electrical signals here, for instance, voltages coming from the low side of this two winding transformer, okay? But coming back to my results, uh, sorry, to my results, here you can see that we have the disconnection. As a consequence, there is a power imbalance. In this case, we have a deficit of generation, frequency goes down, okay? You can see here how the frequencies, in this case, three frequencies, they are going down, reach a minimum value, and then a steady state. Here is the same, here I am plotting, here I am plotting the phase angle diagram, uh, sorry, the phase angle for the voltage in boost bar number one, voltage in boost bar number two, voltage on boost bar number three, okay? But now let's go for the target of this video. In this video, I would like to show you, I would like to show you that you will be able to see, you are able to see uh, variables in those di um, variables, numerical values on those variables, on, on those diagrams, okay? Okay, when you are here in the, in the diagram for the excited, for instance, you can see that every single of those arrows, they have a label with the name, okay? What I want to tell you, what I want to tell you is that in this diagram, we have blocks. Inside those blocks, we have uh, the equivalent for the differential equations that we need to use to create or recreate the dynamic, okay? And those arrows over here, they are dedicated for signal for a signal um, moving inside the block diagram, okay? However, by default, you can see here the name of those variables, okay? For instance, U is the classical, the classical variable used inside the Xilin power factory to represent the voltage, to represent the voltage in positive sequence. In, uh, in this case, in this case, lower letter represents per unit values, okay? Now, something that you can learn and is very interesting and very easy to do is if you stop on those variables, if you stop in those variables, you can do something very simple. 
you can see here the signals, okay? And you can define a format for the signals. In this case, right now, they are in names, but if you want to change, for instance, for signal value, you can run signal values. You can see that suddenly something happened here. As you can see, for instance, here, there are some values that they are appearing, they are appearing in the diagram, okay? What I want to do, what I want to do is edit the layer, okay? And now I will go here, I will go here to text boxes, and I will say add that width, okay? Yes. And right now, what I can tell you is that I configure this diagram to show you, to show you the very specific numerical values of each signal. For instance, if we run here, initial conditions, you can see something quite interesting. You can see over here that the set of voltage is 1.04, and you can see over here that the measurement coming from the system is 1.04, okay? That is quite interesting, because here you can see that later we have here a bias, and we have a mathematical operation. You can see that is adding 0 0.01 per unit. And finally, this is the error that we can find here, okay? Well, some of my students asked me, Professor, what is the best way that I can plot one of those variables coming from the diagram into, uh, into um, my results? And it's extremely simple. To be honest, what you need to do, let's, let's do the following. Imagine that we are interested on plotting this very specific signal over here, VR, okay? If we want to plot that VR, we need to tell to Power Factory to record the numerical values, to record the numerical values of that very specific signal. Put in memory, and then I can create the plot. Okay, now you want to plot one of those signals, the numerical value of those signals, okay? The first step that you must recognize is you must tell Power Factory the specific variable and the specific model where you are taking that variable and store that variable inside the memory. When Power Factory runs the simulation, the numerical results will be stored in that very specific variable, and then you can take that time series and create your plot. That is extremely simple, okay? What I will tell you now is the best way, or yes, the best way to do this. And it's extremely simple, anyone can do that. I mean, what you need to do is initially run initial condition, yeah? Then you want to define, you want to define a new result variable, okay? And to do so is very simple. Here you have in the variable selection, you have the icon for the new object. And you have this dialog diagram over here. And what you need to do is select and Power Factory will open for you. It will open for you this small um, window over here to select the very specific object where you want to collect the numerical values, the numerical values for the solution, okay? In this case, you must remember, you must remember that in this case, we want to plot, we want to plot the result variable for the IEEE type 1, IEEE type 1 um, AVR, okay? In this case, remember, you must remember DSL, pro, uh, DSL. DSL is very simple language inside the Xilin Power Factory. This is the plant model. This is the element composite. And inside you have the DSL, okay? Here you have the AVR and you will select the AVR. Now in this object, you define the model that you want to collect the signals. But where are the signals? Well, extremely simple. You go here to signals and right now you have all the signals you have right now all the signals include inside your model. You must identify here, some of those variables are inputs. You must remember this one is the voltage input, and you must remember here, this is the voltage coming from the PSS, and this is the setup, uh, the, the power setup for this AVR, 
And you have several variables over here, okay? I will select all of them. No problem at all for this case. You must identify they are input variables, they are output variable, they are some states, and here you have some derivative terms, okay? What I want to present in a plot, it will be VR. Remember, VR, we were talking about the intermediate variable that is VR. And VR is a intermediate calculation. To print up calculations, you need to select here, calculation parameters, and you can see the intermediate variable VR, and now, we are able to plot that, okay? Now, let me close here, run initial conditions, run the 20, the 20 second simulations. Now, we are ready for plotting. Now, what we need to do is create a new plot. Beautiful. Now, what we need to do is create here the plot coming from RMS simulations. I will select the element, in this case, the element that, uh, that I am interested to plot the signal is the IEEE type 1. Beautiful. And now here I have all the list of variables that I am collecting. And I want to show you just VR, okay? Voila, here you can see we have here the plot of VR. That is all, it's extremely, extremely simple. What you need to do is run initial conditions, then go to the result variables, create a new object pointing to the ABR or the governor or any dynamic model that you want to get the signal. Go inside the diagrams and select the signal that you want. It could be signal or it can be internal variables using calculations. And then when you run the simulation, you will collect the numerical values in some objects that you can use for plotting. Extremely, extremely simple. Any one of my students can do this. Well, it's time to finish this minute, uh, this video. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you at the next one. Thank you. Bye now.